let's talk about mass percent composition that is useful in chemistry and also useful uh, outside of chemistry when you're thinking about nutrition and many other things as we'll see. So mass percent composition is going to have a number of ways of saying it. So even before I give you the formula, we, mass percent composition is sometimes called percent by mass. That's a percent sign there. Uh, it's sometimes called percent mass divided by mass in parentheses. And because some people refer to it as weight, percent weight by weight, um, although, uh, and you'll see all of these actually, and sometimes you'll even see weight by weight, but they'll tell you in grams, even though grams is a mass. Um, but as oftentimes happens in life, when you have a lots of ways of saying things, it's because it's relatively important to you, as we will see. Now let me give you the formula, percent by mass, is typical of any percent formula, which is you're going to have the part in the numerator divided by the whole in the denominator, and that comes and times 100%. And for this particular one, let's see, so um, so part of sample, this will be the very general version, over um, so mass of part of sample over mass of sample times 100%. And again, we'll see uh, in the next uh, four pages, including this one, uh, a number of ways in which you can use this formula, and we'll write each different version here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about pretzels. So uh, I love pretzels. Um, these are the ones we currently have in our house. All cuts, extra thins. And if you look on the back of the pretzels, so um, let's see if you can see that. So uh, one ounce is the serving size, which is 28 grams. And we're going to calculate, oh, so let me write that down. 28 grams. And then uh, we're going to calculate, we're going to look at the mass of carbohydrates in one serving. And it says 21 grams, which is only 8% of your daily value, but 21 grams. Let's see what mass percent pretzels are of carbohydrates. So 21 grams goes here. And uh, for sodium, we're going to do that one too. It's 430 milligrams. And 430 milligrams, even though milligrams are going to be much smaller, that is 19% of your sodium for the day, according to this system. But it's 430 milligrams. Okay, and now, um, so the carbohydrates and the sodium are going to be part of, so they're going to be the top part that goes in the top. And the mass of our entire sample is going to be the 28 grams. Our first one is going to be percent carbohydrates by mass. In pretzels. And it's going to be the mass of the carbohydrates over the mass of the total serving of pretzels times 100%. And there we go. 21 divided by 28 times 100. Pretzels are 75% carbohydrates. 75% carbohydrates by mass. And you could write either of these other designators uh, two after, instead of by mass. Um, let's see. So even though it's only 8% of your daily allotment, because you can have a lot of carbohydrates according to this system, um, it's 70, pretzels are 75% carbohydrates. Now, it's going to be a much smaller percent of sodium, 
and I'm going to use percent NA and we're going to use this designation this time although they're totally equivalent um, although this is my favorite and this is the one that chemists typically use um, but you can use any of them all right so all right we've got a units dilemma here this is in milligrams and I guess one thing I forgot to mention and I should write this down is that both masses have to have the same units if your units are going to cancel and you're going to end up with just percent as your ending units here. So both masses must be in the same units. All right. And that gets an exclamation point and a little heart because I love units. All right, so uh, before I put it in here, I've got to convert my, gram my milligrams to grams. We know that one milligram equals one times 10 to the minus three grams. And uh, let's see, I think I can finish this up on this side. So uh, 430 milligrams. Uh, one milligram is one times 10 to the minus three grams. Let's multiply that out. 430 times one exponent three minus 0 0.43. And we'll keep our third sig fig with a zero there. That's grams. Double checking everything now. Yes, I think that looks good. So 0 0.430 grams. And by the way, don't get me started on nutritional labels and sig figs. <laughs> um, all right, but now our sample size is still 28 grams. Our serving size, if you will, is our sample times 100%. Still got my number in my calculator, divide it by 28 times it by 100, 1.54% sodium. mass by mass. And you can see that that, that it's 1.5% sodium, but that was 19% of your daily allotment of sodium. So clearly you need a lot less sodium than carbohydrates according to these guidelines. Now let's move over and start talking more about chemistry here. I do wanna close off my pretzels so they don't go stale. All right. Um, we're going to do this benzoic acid. It's got the COOH in the back, as you can see. What is the mass percent carbon in benzoic acid? Now, there are one plus six. There are seven carbons in this compound. And so we have to count all of them. Our percent carbon mass by mass is going to be mass of all carbons over mass benzoic acid times 100%. So uh, mass of all carbons, so all seven of them. And in order to do this, we're going to have to do a couple things. We're going to have to do the molar mass of benzoic acid. And let's see. Well, let's do the seven carbons first. Seven times 12.01. And then uh, that's the seven carbons. So let's just multiply that out. Seven times 12.01 is 84.07 and that's still grams and then I've got 84.07 grams for my carbon it looks like I have 5 plus 1 that's going to be 6 hydrogens 6 times 1.008 
6.048 or 6.05 grams carbon, grams hydrogen, and I have, yes, uh, two oxygens, which is going to be 32.00 grams oxygen. And uh, that's going to be times 100%. So let me add up these uh, denominators here. 84.07 plus 6.05 plus 32. I get 122.12 gram C6H5COOH. Yep. Gram C on top. My gram units cancel. Let's multiply everything out here. So 84.07 divided by 122.12. Does that look right? 84, 94, 104, 114. Yep. Um, times 100%. 68.8. 68.8 um, and three sig figs are always good in this class remember uh, both numbers have four sig figs so if you gave me four that would be fine too I'm gonna go with three 68.8 percent carbon mass by mass I'm gonna leave this one for you to do in your lecture outlines please do that and I will look for it um, when I grade them couple other examples here. This is going to be Cheerios versus Cheerios protein. Cheerios protein was a product that uh, the maker of Cheerios, which is I believe General Mills, um, I'm a big fan of Cheerios, <laughs> not necessarily of General Mills, although maybe. Um, anyway, they, they marketed Cheerios protein and there was a big news article about it and I'm going to explain to you why here. So uh, because we're going to ask the question, which has a higher mass percentage protein? And uh, off the box here, I think I can get my box under the camera here. Oop, maybe not. Let's see if I can get it up close there. So you can see there's uh, five grams of protein in the serving size. And the serving size that we're using is the 39 grams because we're over, we're four plus years old. Uh, that's what we got here for regular old Cheerios. Uh, if you could read this, or if you look online, there are 7 grams of protein in a 55 gram serving of Cheerios protein. Now, um, let's figure out the percent protein. Percent protein. Uh, mass by mass. And this is going to be for the regular old Cheerios. We've got 5 grams of protein. per 39 gram serving or let's spread so 39 grams of Cheerios times 100 percent and over here we have 7 grams of protein in 55 times 100% and um, let's multiply this out and see what's going on here 5 divided by 39 times 100 I get 12.8 percent protein mass by mass here 7 divided by 55 times 100, I get 12.7 percent protein, mass by mass. Wait a minute, are you telling me that Cheerios protein has essentially the same, if anything, less? Really, Cheerios protein is just Cheerios? the same thing as always in a box with a bigger serving size. 
Anyway, the, if you check online, uh, General Mills caught a lot of flack for this. And as far as I know, you can no longer buy Cheerios protein. Uh, there are a number of products on the market that actually do have more protein. Uh, I actually bought some uh, soy milk with some more protein in it, and it had a little, had a little too much for me. I went, I didn't buy that one again. Uh, it was a little, little too viscous for me. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so now you have the power to analyze nutritional labels if you didn't before, which probably you did. All right, now another example, and this is uh, in the medical field, says the liquid in an, intra, uh, in an intravenous or IV bag is 0.9% sodium chloride. How many grams of sodium chloride are there in a 1.00 liter bag of this solution? Assume that the density of the solution is 1.00 gram per milliliter, the same as water. All right, so I read this problem and to be honest, I mean, I know how to do it, but when I first read this problem, I said, I don't even know where to start. But I do see percent, and we are in the percent section. So not knowing anything, percent sodium chloride mass by mass equals, well, it's gonna be grams of sodium chloride because these two things are always the same over grams of in this case, uh, solution times 100%. And I don't know where I'm getting all my numbers from, but if you are in the same section or it's covered on the exam and you see it, I always just start writing things out. And hopefully it makes sense. Um, and then I start plugging in numbers and uh, you don't always have to know how you're going to solve a problem when you start writing about it, right? That's a tip that I've picked up in multiple classes over the years. Um, my other tip is cancel your units. If you can cancel your units, there's a good shot you're on your way to the right answer or at least partial credit. Um, anyway, <laughs> years of test taking. Um, so 0.9%. 0.9% is going to go, well, I guess I should write it there, 0.9. It's only got one significant figure, which I worry about, but I'm still going to give my answer to three sig figs. Let's see. Liquid in an intravenous bag is 0.9%. Use that number. How many grams of sodium chloride? That's what we're looking for, and I'm going to call it X this time. Um, are there in a 1.00 liter bag of this solution? Uh, all right, don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I have 1.00 liters of solution, and I'm gonna use my abbreviation for solution here, which is S-O-L-N. Uh, assume that the density of the solution, aha, uh -huh, is grand, the density is going to allow me to convert milliliters into grams. That's a unit conversion factor there. unit conversion for grams to milliliters or vice versa. And, uh, but I have liters, and so it looks like I need a unit conversion to convert liters into milliliters. We know that one liter equals, let's see, yeah, one milliliter uh, equals one times 10 to the minus third liters. And um, we also know that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So however you memorize this, um, we, know, we know that, uh, well, what do we know? <laughs> 1.00 liters. I'm going to do it the way that I initially taught you to memorize it, which is one milliliter equals one times 10 to the minus three liters. So one divided by one exponent three minus, and I get the other unit conversion factor, which is uh, one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. However you get it, you now have milliliters of solution, and you're looking for grams of solution. 
So let's keep going. I know the math on this is pretty straightforward because it's one gram per milliliter, but let's you do it doing our picket fence unit conversion method, which says one milliliter equals 1.00 grams. And yes, I get 1,000 grams of solution. And I didn't put my solutions here. I guess I could. You don't have to, though. Just know that it is still solution. Wow, this problem had a lot of subtleties to it. We've worked through almost all of them. Let's go ahead and put this 1,000 grams there. The last thing we have to do is we have to solve this. And what's on my next page? Uh, the next set of problems. So this is going to be 0.9% sodium chloride mass by mass equals X grams of sodium chloride over 1,000 grams of solution times 100%. Okay, now I just wanted to write that out because now I'm going to go back to my red. And uh, this is, um, there are many ways to solve this. This is algebra. There are many ways to solve this. The way that I like to do it is I like to put this over a 1. And I like to make the note that since these are multiplied, this goes on top. So I extend that there. And now I can cross multiply. Um, so it's going to be 0 0.9. Then I'm just going to use my numbers here. I'm going to use my leave my units behind. Deep breath, Bill. 1,000 grams. So that's this times this equals 1 times x times 100. That is how you set up the cross multiplication for this. Again, lots of ways to do this part. But uh, now let's multiply things out a little bit. So 0.9 times 1,000 equals 900. And uh, this is just going to equal 100x. To get x by itself, divide each side by 100. And x equals 900 divided by 100, or 9. And X, if you'll remember, was our grams of sodium chloride. And I realize I went on an extra page here, so you may need to get an extra page. Maybe you could fit everything on our, your original page for this. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's, that's how you figure out what's in your IV bag, uh, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um,